So you're into hiking, right? But what kind of a hiker are you? Do you like to prepare and plan your hike? Or are you a fly by the seat of your pants and let's just see where we end up type of a hiker? Hey everyone, in this video I want to show you my top four hiking apps that I personally use to prep as best as I can when hitting a trail. And best of all, they're free! If you follow my channel, you know that I do a lot of hiking and especially off-track hiking exploration. But nevertheless, I'm a big believer in planning for a trail as much as you can. In fact, I promote the seven P's of hiking. Proper prior planning prevents predictable perilous pickles. Plus my missus wants me to come home at the end of the day. So in this video, I'll cover Queensland Globe, Gaia GPS, Maps Me, and Wikiloc. So let's jump straight into it. First cab off the rank is Queensland Globe. Now if you live in Queensland, Australia, like myself, you will absolutely want to see this. A big shout out to Matt from the Craving Cast YouTube channel for showing me this. I really, really appreciate it. This was an absolute game changer for me. Queensland Globe is an online interactive tool that turns physical, geographical and spatial data about a particular location into map format. And this data is called layers. And there are hundreds of spatial data layers of Queensland, but the one that I use most for researching and planning my hikes is the elevation layer. Sometimes this is referred to as LIDAR, or Light Detection and Ranging Technology, which is used to create high resolution models of ground elevation. And what this means is that you basically see terrain a whole lot better, which is so important if you enjoy getting off the trail. So let me show you the elevation layer in Queensland Globe. Now once you open Queensland Globe in your web browser, navigate to a location you're researching. Now in my example, let's take a closer look at the Flinders Peak group of mountains in the Ipswich area, which is a favourite area of mine to explore. So I'll go to search, and then I'll select features of Queensland, and I will enter Flinders Peak. And there you go, Flinders Peak peak in Ipswich City. Once you select that, it takes you straight to the top of a mountain that we all know and love in southeast Queensland called Flinders Peak. Now this is high quality imagery in 2D, but you also have a 3D option. Check it out. Now what we want is to be able to see the terrain much better because the trees and vegetation at the moment, they're really covering everything up. So what you wanna do is select the elevation layer. And the way you do this is go to layer, select add layer, and you will then see elevation. Now you see that little down arrow on the right? Click that and you will see what information the elevation data layer contains. Tick elevation and then hit the back arrow. Turn off contours by clicking the eye symbol. And what you have now is an extremely helpful view of the terrain. And this is called hill shade and gives you a gray scale 3D representation of the terrain surface. You can view hill shade traditional, which takes the sun's relative position for shading the image or you can view hillshade multi-directional, which combines light from multiple sources and basically just shows you more detail. Now I like to view both traditional and multi-directional hillshade to get as much information about a location as I can. Now this gets even more powerful when you turn on the 3D function but it does slow things down on the computer, so it all depends on what kind of processor and graphics card you have. But it's a very helpful way to view the terrain that you're planning to explore. Now experiment with this yourself on different locations and you will be amazed at what you can see. I mean, you're gonna see roads, trails, even old tracks, cutouts, and many terrain features that otherwise you simply cannot visualize on other programs and platforms. You also can access this application from your smartphone too, and that's so helpful, but it will only show 2D view and not 3D. Anyways, I hope you find this elevation functionality in Queensland Globe helpful. Now let's take a close look at Gaia GPS. 
This is mapping and navigation software that's optimized for working with your smartphone and it's absolutely fantastic. Essentially, Gaia GPS makes your phone act like a handheld GPS unit and in my opinion, it significantly outperforms a conventional handheld GPS device like a Garmin GPS map. Now I own a Garmin GPS map 66i and I prefer the free Gaia GPS app on my Android smartphone any day of the week. You get a nice large format screen with loads of information that will help guide you on the trails. A big benefit is that Gaia GPS works without Wi-Fi or a cellular phone signal. Even in airplane mode, your smartphone will communicate with GPS satellites to get your location just the same as a conventional handheld GPS like a Garmin. The GPS chips in current smartphones are quite good and have similar accuracy to traditional GPS units like my full-size Garmin GPS Map 66i. Gaia GPS also has a great website where I like to plan my hiking routes and then I can easily transfer it to my phone. I only use the free version at the moment which allows me to use basic maps record my trips, and most importantly, create my routes. But if you like, you can pay a yearly subscription, which enables you to access a lot more features and functionality. And this is around 60 Australian dollars a year at the moment. But the way I use this is basically to create my routes. And I usually do it on the Gaia GPS website first. I then name it and save it. And when I open up Gaia GPS app upon my smartphone, there it is, under the saved folder. That's so easy. That is extremely easy to do. It's brilliant. And then when I'm at my actual hiking location, I use Gaia GPS on my smartphone and can follow my planned route. I can also easily create routes from my phone on this app but I much prefer doing it on my computer first because I can see the terrain, hillshade imagery, and therefore plan so much better for my adventure. Something else that can be helpful on Gaia GPS is the public tracks overlay. Now up on the Gaia GPS map, these are viewed as green lines. Now this is helpful because it actually shows tracks that people have walked before and have uploaded onto Gaia GPS. You can turn these public tracks on and off in the Maps Overlays section. The free version of Gaia GPS is very powerful on your computer. It's got different maps available, terrain contours, 3D functionality. I just love this program and also the smartphone app. So be sure to check that out. And now let's move on to Maps.me. Maps.me is a completely free app for your smartphone. And unlike Google Maps, Maps.me has the benefit that the maps are completely offline. So no internet connection is required. This can be incredibly handy when you don't have access to a mobile phone tower or if you're traveling in a different country. You will not be tethered to needing data. I've been using Maps.me for quite a few years now, primarily because it shows many of the main trails around the places that I may want to explore. And this is where this app shines in my opinion. Recently, I visited the Grampians National Park in Victoria. Forget the tourist information center. They had no idea on decent hiking trails out there. They did have some very generic trail maps to give out to tourists, and I personally find those trail maps very useless. So I turned to Maps.me, and it showed me where the trails were. It showed me the lookouts, waterfalls, and other features as well. Take my word for it, you will want this app on your phone. Whether you're backpacking, trail running, hiking, or just walking in the new city or driving, this app covers roads, bicycle paths, typical footpaths, mountain biking trails, and hiking trails. And often it will list the trail names as well. Very, very helpful. It won't show terrain contour lines like Gaia GPS can, but you can select a mountain peak and you can find information on its elevation if you wish. This app has a lot of functionality and it uses OpenStreetMap data and simply works when Google Maps won't load up for you due to poor mobile phone reception or some other reason. It honestly has so much to offer, so be sure to check out Maps.me. I've also used this on my overseas travels and it simply works flawlessly, no matter where you are. You just need to ensure that you download the map of the area you're planning to visit and once downloaded, 
it's on your phone and you're good to go. I think this is an essential app for hikers and adventurers and I always use it for my outdoor trekking. And last of all, I'll just mention briefly Wikiloc. This is basically a big worldwide trail database where people have uploaded trails with pictures, trail notes, you can access their GPX route if you want to follow it. Wikiloc has a website and also an app for your smartphone and it's free or you can have a subscription plan which enables some more functionality upon your smartphone. I personally don't use it for following someone's route when I'm out in the field, but rather I use it for these two purposes. First of all, if I'm looking for a trail, I like to search the Wikiloc database first and hopefully someone has uploaded a trail that might have a few pictures of what to expect and more importantly, some trail notes. By the way, I absolutely hate it when people put up Wikiloc entries and can't be bothered writing some trail notes about it. Please, don't be that guy or girl. If you're gonna put up a Wikiloc entry, then write some trail notes as well so it can help someone else. And the second way I use Wikiloc is to post up all of my public trails that I'm happy for others to view. I put up my trail notes there, the GPX routes, some pictures, but most importantly, because I do YouTube videos of my hiking explorations, I also place my video link in the Wikiloc description field and you can see my video of the trail if you wish. I'm a big believer that although notes are helpful, pictures are nice, I would much rather see someone else's video of a trail as I prep for a hike. So basically, I use Wikiloc as my public database of trails that I have hiked so that it can help others explore the great outdoors. So be sure to check out my Wikiloc channel and it's simply called Gel Builder. Now you might be wondering why I haven't mentioned all trails. The reason is I personally don't bother with all trails as I think it's not very user friendly and I simply don't like the user interface. But that's just my opinion and so I won't be going into that upon this video. I just don't like using it and don't recommend it. Now just remember, these are the programs that I personally use when planning my hikes and I've only covered them very briefly. Let me know in the comments below if you found this helpful or useful or if you'd like to share what programs or apps you personally use when preparing for your hiking. Thanks again for watching the video as always. Catch you on the next one.